A successful psychiatrist's life upends when she meets a troubled man who claims an ancient malevolent spirit wishes permanent possession of his body. In the Miskatonic Medical School morgue, psychiatrist Dr. Daniela Upton, or Danny, opens a body bag to inspect the remains of a recently deceased man. Eventually, she exits the room so the pathologist can proceed with the autopsy. On her way out, security guard Mace asks the doctor if it's true that they've detained her colleague Dr. Derby. And she affirms, the woman heads to the psych ward, where Dr. Elizabeth Derby, or Beth, asks if they cremated the body. So Danny says they're starting the autopsy in a few minutes. The upset woman emphasizes the importance of destroying the remains, revealing that she was responsible for the death of the man in the morgue. Confused by her colleague's ravings, Danny implores that she recognize her symptoms, and Beth acknowledges that it does seem like she has paranoid schizophrenia. She knows her friend won't understand what she's going through unless she experiences it herself, so Danny tells her to recount everything that's happened from the very beginning. Weeks ago, Beth finishes up a session with her patient, Professor Fisk. The man swears he isn't addicted to cigarettes and shows how easy it is to quit by throwing the box of smokes into the trash can. After he leaves, Eves, someone knocks on the door, and an anxious ace await introduces himself as a student at Miskatonic. When Fisk opens the door to retrieve the cigarettes from the trash can, the jumpy student grabs Beth's arm. After the professor leaves, Asa tells the doctor he read her book on out-of-body experiences, but she quickly clarifies that she meant the topic as a symptom of schizophrenia. The man claims he was outside his body, prompting the curious psychiatrist to invite him into her office. Beth explains that it's normal for some psychiatrists psychiatry students to feel as though they're experiencing certain conditions. But Asa says he didn't read her book for class, but because he dealt with it firsthand. Suddenly, his phone buzzes, and he refuses to answer the call, convinced someone might take over his body again. The frightened student asks the woman to accompany him to his house at number 33 High Street, but Beth explains she doesn't go to patients' homes. When the phone continues buzzing, the man finally answers the call and defiantly exclaims he's with someone who can help him. However, when the person on the other end utters an unintelligible phrase, Asa suffers a seizure and drops to the floor, where he writhes in pain. Seconds later, the seizure stops, and the doctor asks the student if he's okay. Asa appears completely fine and acts as though he doesn't remember the conversation they had before his fit. The student asks the doctor what he said, so she reminds him that he claimed to have an out-of-body experience. Asa scoffs and tells Beth she shouldn't believe everything a person says. The man asks for a smoke, but she says it's prohibited in the medical office, so he remarks how much he hates the modern world. Eventually, the psychiatrist hands the patient her card, and she vows to help him pro bono. Before he leaves, Asa approaches the woman and touches her inappropriately. She swipes his hand away, and the student ominously states that she can't help him. That evening, Beth discusses the case with her husband, Edward. She theorizes early child abuse as the possible cause for Asa's condition and thinks the patient makes for an interesting case study. Edward tries to distract her obsessive thoughts by sharing what he did all day, such as going through several job interviews and preparing their dinner. She acknowledges her propensity for taking work home with her and appreciates his calming presence. Later, the couple makes love, but in the middle of the deed, Beth imagines Asa in place of Edward. The next day, the doctor continues thinking about her new patient, so she heads to his house at number 33 High Street. When no one answers the door, she enters the house and sees a framed picture of Asa and his father Ephraim. Seconds later, Beth hears a noise from the other room, so she enters the study, where she finds the barely conscious older man on a chair. Suddenly, Ephraim opens his eyes, startling the doctor, and after he tells her to grab his medication from his pocket, she slips a tablet into his mouth. He recognizes the psychiatrist from the pictures on her book scattered around the house, so she explains that she's there to speak to his son. Ephraim says Asa ran off days ago and adds that his son never had any earthly use. Beth argues his child doesn't exist merely for him to exploit, but the older man says it's what everyone's for except him. On the table, the doctor sees an open book with illustrations of strange creatures and symbols. The father says that suffering a stroke and numerous other maladies weakened his body, prompting the concerned woman to remark that he's in no condition to take care of Asa, whom she believes needs psychiatric help. Eventually, the annoyed man brandishes a knife and orders the woman to leave. Then he has a cuffing fit, but when Beth approaches to see if he's okay, he swipes the knife. 
nicking her hand with the blade. As the frightened doctor leaves, Ephraim places the weapon on the book, and the pages absorb the blood. To distract herself from the harrowing ordeal, Beth returns to her usual routine. One day, she performs hypnotherapy on Stuart, hoping it'll fix his violent tendencies. She asks the man to stare at her penlight, which she waves in front of him until he falls into a trance. In the middle of the session, Asa arrives and says he tried to run away but he couldn't. He says she witnessed what it did to him that day in her office and adds that he'd rather perish than allow it to steal his body and his life. Beth says she's glad the student came back and asks him to stay in the waiting area while she finishes her session with Stuart. Then, the doctor returns to the office to take the patient out of hypnosis. However, when she checks on Asa, she finds that he's no longer there. That night, the psychiatrist receives a call from a frantic Asa begging for help. She quickly grabs her car keys and tells Edward she needs to see a patient. The husband advises her against it and implores her to contact the police instead. Despite Edward's pleas, she leaves the house and heads to Ace's address. In the study, she finds Ephraim on the floor and searches for his medication. When she doesn't find it, she calls 911, but Asa appears and tosses her phone aside. The student grabs the knife from the drawer and begs the doctor to let the older man perish, but she demands he hand the blade over. After she takes the medicine canister from Ace's pocket, she pours the contents into her hand and a few tablets spill on the floor. Then, she places one inside the dying man's mouth. But when she checks for a pulse, she doesn't feel anything. Calmly, Beth explains that whatever power he thinks his father has over him is gone. However, the student says Ephraim isn't his father because someone took over the older man's body and now wants him. Aza says the only way the entity loses its power is for them to cut off the head and burn the body. He adds that the incident in her office was the second time it happened, and if he allows a third instance, it'll be permanent. Suddenly, the older man raises his arm, prompting the son to lunge with a blade. However, Ephraim grabs him by the throat and utters a phrase in an ancient language. Immediately, the two men fall to the floor suffering from seizures. After the fit, Asa appears completely fine and scoffs when Beth tells him what happened. She thinks he switches personalities to escape the abuse he suffered at the hands of his father. The doctor suggests taking him to Miskatonic to work through his issues, especially since he just witnessed his father's death. However, the entity possessing Asa approaches the psychiatrist and coerces her into making love. During the deed, the man orders the woman to give herself to him, and as they finish, the evil spirit takes over Beth's body and transfers her soul into the students. The transfer lasts a few seconds, and both experience seizures, returning the souls to their original hosts. Asa tells the confused woman that the first time is always the quickest and most painful. While he sits at the table, he realizes Ephraim's missing, so he leaves the room to search for the older man. The psychiatrist opens the book, and when the glowing eye of the illustrated creature startles her, she drops the tome, causing one pill to fall through a crack on the floor. Curious, she lifts the rug and finds a trap door leading to the basement. While she opens it, the older man appears and begs her for help, insisting that he's Asa. They bump the table, causing a lit candle to fall to the floor and roll towards the curtains. Suddenly, Asa arrives and proceeds to stab and slice the older man's neck. Horrified, Beth watches as the decapitated head begs her for help one last time. The doctor runs out of the burning house and scrambles to her car to escape. Hours later, Beth talks to Danny, but even after she recounts what happened, the colleague thinks what she thought was transference was probably her projecting pain and guilt onto Aza. She also theorizes that the patient may have given her a hallucinogen, causing Beth to question if last night's events truly happened. Danny suggests she tell Edward everything and promises they'll work through her issues. Then, they share their secret handshake and swear to stick together through all kinds of weather. Later, when the woman arrives home, Detective Ledger and Officer Huxley are there waiting for her. The cops ask if she was in Ephraim Waite's house last night, and she affirms. They also mention that Asa said she was there to help him but that she left before the fire started. The cops return her phone, which the firefighters found on the scene. Before they leave, Detective Ledger asks about the 911 call she made last night. So Beth lies and says she misdiagnosed Asa's panic attack as a cardiac event, explaining the call. After the cops depart, the concerned husband asks what happened last night. So the doctor admits to sleeping with a patient. She realizes it was a mistake and apologizes profusely. But the upset man heads upstairs to be alone. 
To give her husband some space, Beth decides to temporarily stay in her office. While she stands in front of the open window, Asa arrives and wordlessly walks toward her. She obediently spreads her legs, and the man pleasures her. However, when the doctor looks down, she sees that he turned into Ephraim, who pushes her out the window. As she falls to the ground below, the older man triumphantly screams. Just before she hits the concrete, Beth wakes up from the nightmare. The next day, her patient mentions how she sometimes wishes she could turn back time, and the statement encourages the psychiatrist to patch things up with Edward. So she gives her husband a call and tells him she's coming home to make things right. Later, she takes a shower while waiting for Edward to return. Meanwhile, the possessed student handcuffs himself to a pole in the basement and calls the doctor. Beth answers and asks Aza if he gave her a hallucinogen the other night, which might explain the strange events. Instead of answering the question, the man expresses how much he enjoyed using her body and says it was unlike anything he'd experienced. When Beth continues pestering him about what happened, Asa utters the phrase, triggering the body swap. In the bathroom, the entity marvels and explores its new body. Concurrently, Beth realizes the transference was real now that she's in the student's body. She smells a foul stench, so she scans the basement and spots Ephraim's burnt remains below a demonic symbol. As she searches for a means of escape, she finds the pill that fell through the floor crack. Then she calls Danny, but because she is in Asa's body, her friend won't recognize her voice. So the doctor introduces himself as one of Beth's friends and tells the woman to head to the Waits residence and rescue her colleague from the basement via a trap door in the study. Meanwhile, the entity entices Edward into making love. In the basement, Danny finds the man but doesn't realize it's her friend trapped in the body. Beth tries to explain the situation, but the absurdity of the details prompts the psychiatrist to assume he's the patient Beth told her about. Then, the distressed woman remembers she was at home and that her husband might be alone with the evil spirit. So she calls the police and tells them to head to her house. Minutes later, Detective Ledger and Officer Huxley arrive, and the entity lies and says one of her unstable patients must have made the misleading call to the authorities. In the basement, Beth says she might be the victim of an ancient ritual wherein someone made a pact with a powerful being for the ability to jump from one body to another in exchange for human sacrifices. However, the friend grows more convinced that he's the patient her colleague mentioned. Beth remembers Asa mentioning that if the transference occurs three times, it permanently seals the possession. To convince her friend she's telling the truth, the woman recounts Danny's affair with a patient, a fact nobody else knows. Then, she reaches out her hand for their secret handshake. Suddenly, both possessed bodies have seizures, switching back to their souls. At home, Beth expresses her relief upon seeing Edward unharmed and tells the cops that she's okay. In the basement, the entity grabs the key from the top of the pole, unlocks himself and rolls a cigarette. When Danny sees that he's seemingly okay, she assumes what happened was a sick role-playing game between the man and Beth, so she leaves annoyedly. In the house, Beth learns the entity made love to Edward while in her body and used a knife to give his torso small cuts during the deed. To keep her husband safe, she tells them to stay at their place on Shelter Island. Then she drives off without saying where she's headed. That night, the psychiatrist leaves a note for Edward in case she perishes while dealing with the entity. When the possessed Asa arrives, she threatens to throw herself out the office window if he tries to occupy her body again. The arrogant being places the blade on the desk and says she can live if she manages to kill him. So the doctor grabs the knife and defensively holds it in front of her. When she realizes the blade's gleam mimics her penlight, Beth moves the glint over Ace's eyes over and over, secretly hypnotizing him. As the man falls into a trance, she stabs his forehead, and in the ensuing struggle, pushes him out the window. Before the spirit utters the phrase, the body hits the concrete below. The doctor quickly runs outside, and when she sees he's still alive, she backs her car into him several times, mangling his body against the wall. Seconds later, she gets out of the car to check if he's dead but the man's eyes open. Determined to end the evil being for good, the crazed woman stabs the main body over and over. However, two cops arrive and drag her away while she screams that she has to finish the job. In the padded cell, Beth finishes recounting everything that happened and swears she didn't kill Asa but that she was trying to kill the thing inside him. She says she doesn't think the entity is dead, but Danny assures no one could survive the trauma he endured. 
So Beth explains it doesn't matter what state the body is in because destroying the brain is the only way to stop it. Seeing how important it is to her friend, Danny promises to do what she can. In the morgue, the possessed man opens his eyes and manages to utter the phrase, successfully transferring the entity to Beth's body and vice versa. After the seizures, the reanimated corpse drags himself across the floor, begging the pathologist for help. The frightened man runs out of the room, and Mace lays eyes on the horrific sight when he checks what spooked the pathologist. In the padded cell, Danny notes the sudden change in Beth's demeanor and says she's only seen one other similar schizophrenic episode. She says Ace also went from hysterical claims of possession to complete composure. To test whether Beth's claims were valid, Danny covers her name tag and asks the colleague what her name is. The possessed woman tries to evade the question, further convincing the psychiatrist that her friend wasn't lying. Suddenly, Mays arrives to inform the doctor of what happened in the morgue. Before she leaves the cell, Danny orders two orderlies to watch Beth. In the hallway, she happens upon the main body dragging itself across the floor. The person weakly says she's Beth, so Danny tries to defibrillate her, but it's too late. Then, she returns to the cell to confront the malevolent being whom she accuses of killing her friend. The doctor threatens to keep it in the padded room, isolated and heavily medicated until it perishes. In the ensuing scuffle, the entity grabs the doctor by the throat and utters the phrase. In the hallway, the orderlies place the corpse on a stretcher. Suddenly, the two Two women burst out of the room and continue the fight in the hall. Danny tells Mace to shoot the dangerous patient, but the psychiatrist, now trapped in Beth's body, says she is the real Dr. Upton. Because the guard hesitates, the evil being tries to grab the gun from the man, but they both drop it on the floor. Danny picks the weapon up and swears she is the doctor. Beside her, Beth, trapped in Ace's body, begs her friend to put her out of her misery, so Danny mercifully shoots her in the head. Seconds later, the spirit screams the phrase, placing itself back in Beth's body, ensuring she has the gun. Mace tries to calmly talk the patient into lowering the weapon, but the entity shoots him. When she realizes the pistol's out of bullets, Danny tackles the woman, and they both fall to the floor where the spirit pins her down. Eventually, orderlies arrive and separate the two women. Days later, Danny consoles Edward, who's having trouble accepting his wife's descent into madness. After the man leaves, the psychiatrist enjoys a hand-rolled cigarette and laughs maniacally. In the padded cell, the real Danny, trapped inside Beth's body, screams that she isn't supposed to be there. But the ravings of the other patients drown out her desperate cries. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.